Chapter 20, A Short Vacation Anne had, heard a perfect, had earned perfect attendance record in grades 4, 5, 6, 8, and 10. She loved going to school, and Anne had never, never tried to stay home from school on purpose. Not once, at least not during my lifetime. That's why I had been forced to turn to my big brother Todd to learn the fine, fine art of malingering. Todd pretended to be sick about once a month, usually about three days after he got a new computer game. Todd knew how to make himself throw up. He could make his face break out in red blotches. He could seem to come down with a sudden fever. And he could manufacture toilet noises that made mom or dad pound on the bathroom door and shout, Todd, Todd, are you all right in there? Todd was the master. I only faked being sick when I absolutely had to. And that's how I felt on Monday morning. I couldn't deal with Stephen or Mrs. Hackney or my mom or dad or anybody. I needed to be alone. So first I waited until dad left for work because he always got more suspicious than mom. Then I got myself nice and hot by jumping up and down on my desk chair about 30 times. Then I climbed into bed, pulled up the covers and called, Mom, could you come in here? My stomach doesn't feel so good. One hand on my forehead was all it took. You feel a little feverish, too. Poor dear. Probably one of those bugs that's going around. This is much, such a miserable time of year. A few minutes later, Mom had bought me a tray with a glass of Sprite and some dry toast. As she fluffed my pillows and tucked in my quilt, she said, I've got three appointments this morning, Nora, but I'll check in by phone, okay? I called Mrs. Farris next door, and she's at home all day today. She'll come over to check on you in an hour or so. She's got a key, and I'll come home at lunchtime. If you need anything at all, you call me or your dad, all right? And you just stay right here and rest. I nodded. I only nodded. I was too weak to speak. Five minutes later, a beautiful silence settled over the house. And finally, I felt like I could actually think. <clears throat> Except I didn't. I went downstairs to the family room and did the opposite of thinking. I turned on the TV. I flipped to the learning channel and toured castles in Ireland for a while. Then I explored the Great Barrier Reef, and then I went digging for dinosaur bones in Wyoming. I was on vacation. At about 9.30, Mrs. Farris opened the front door and yelled, Yoo-hoo, Nora, it's me, Mrs. Farris. She came into the family room, fussed around for a few minutes, and then left. I was just beginning a submarine journey to the wreck of the Titanic when the phone rang. I hit the mute button on the remote and used my sickest voice. I said, hello. It wasn't mom. A lady said, hello, may I speak with Mr. or Mrs. Rowley? I've always been t told never to let a caller know that I was home alone. So I said, my dad's out in the backyard with Rolf. That's our German Shepherd. May I have your name and number so my dad can call you back in a few minutes? There was a pause and a lady said, Nora, is that you? And then I knew that voice. It was Mrs. Hackney. I gulped and said, yes. And I stalled for time. I said, who is this? It's Mrs. Hackney, Nora. I need to speak to your mother. The tone of her voice told me that it was a, not a social call, probably about the meeting for me getting into the gifted program. I said, well, I stayed homesick today, and my dad's not really here right now, and we don't really have a dog either, either, and my mom had to go out for a little bit, but she has a phone with her. Then I gave Mrs. Hackney the number. She said, thank you, and she hung up before I could even say you're welcome or goodbye or anything. Seemed pretty rude, but I didn't think about it because I went right back to my exciting undersea exploration. Just as the first submarine was getting its remote camera into the dining room of the, the, the Titanic, my mom came bursting through the front door. 
She was halfway up the stairs to my bedroom before she heard the TV, and then two seconds flat, she was standing in front of me. With her eyes flashing and her voice down low in the danger tone, Mom said, shut off the TV. Go upstairs and get in your room, your school clothes, now. But I'm sick. Mom said, I doubt that, but frankly, right now, it doesn't matter. Get dressed. We've got to be at the school in 10 minutes, so move it. Why? She shook her head. Hush. Hurry. Three minutes later, we were backing out of the driveway. I hadn't even brushed my teeth. I said, how come we have a meeting about the gifted program today? What's the big rush? My mom kept her eyes on the road, both hands tight on the steering wheel. She shook her head. This is not what this meeting is about. Not by a long shot. This meeting is about zeros, Nora, like the ones you got on those tests on Friday. My head started pounding. <clears throat> My heart started pounding. I, I was going to tell you about that, Mom. That was just a crazy idea I had. But it's all over now. I'm not going to do that anymore. Honest. My mom darted a sideways look at me, then a look back at the road. Well, that's fine for you, but what about all those other kids? The other kids? What are you talking about? Glancing at me again, Mom said, Don't play dumb with me, Nora. That's never going to work again. I'm talking about the social studies quiz that Mrs. Noyes gave this morning. Mrs. Hackney just called me and said that all but two students in the whole blue team got zeros on that quiz. That's 42 zeros. And because of what happened on Friday, Mrs. Hackney would like to have a little talk with you and with me and your father. Mom was done sharing. She pressed her lips together in a thin, hard line and drove the car. It was about another two minutes to the school. Mom hadn't given me a, a lot of information, but I processed all the available data. Three seconds later, I knew. I knew exactly what happened. Someone had been busy over the weekend. And I knew something else, too. When Stephen had tried to call me on Saturday and Sunday, I should have talked to him. <laughs>